asking you, are you mentally prepared to take on that responsibility? So how many millionaires do we have in the room? That is what I want to see. You know, how many of you guys filled out the survey before? Before, I had a pre-survey, because I just wanted to see what you guys were doing. I read every single one of them all the way up to this morning. Every single one of them. There's a lot of people in here that have never done a deal. Two deals. Some guy did 22 deals. Some of you guys want to make $60,000 this year. Some of you guys want to make, somebody said, uh, I think it's like seven million. I ain't mad, don't laugh. I made six last year. But there was one that I read that really stood out to me. Where, where's, where's Mark at? If your name is Mark, raise your hand. Mark, come up here real quick. Come on. Somebody give me a mic. Somebody give me a handheld mic. Who's got a handheld mic for me? Come on, man, put some pep into it. Remember Coach Lynch said, every entrepreneur moves with a sense of urgency. That's one thing I learned in the Air Force. I asked my brother, I hate lazy people. We got one, we got two? I'm not lazy. Yeah, you see how you ran? Good job, man. Step up here, man. <laughs> check, check. Can we get this one? There we go. This yeah. is your. First of all, y'all give him a round of applause. First time in front of 500 people? It's cool. Don't worry. Where are you from? Louisville, Kentucky. Anybody from Kentucky in here? She said, me. <laughs> so what I was reading about your, your wishes and your wants is that you got people and family members depending on you, and you're sick and tired of living a mediocre life. Is that what you said? It's turn, turn him up right here. You got it on? Yeah, so everybody can hear you. He said 100%. Who, who's depending on you right now? I have a wife, two daughters. Uh, turn this up, please. I have, a, I have a sister that she just she just can't get a break. And it's all mental, but I feel like if I can show her what's possible, yeah. I can guide her to where I need her to be, where I want her to be, where she wants to be. So that's one of the biggest things. I talked to my wife the other day. She said, I said, uh, I, hope she's all right. I hope she's all right. She said, why, do you, why are you thinking about that? I told her about something that happened 10 years ago. But it still sits with me because it's just I, I care about her, and I just want to make sure she's going the right track, you know? I hope she's mentally doing all right, stuff like yeah. that. So I have two daughters, and I want them to have everything that I couldn't have. My pops had a business when, he was, when I was younger. My parents split. The business went downhill because he was like, I don't want her to have half of it. So I grew up without for a long time. And as a stupid adult like I am, I don't take things seriously and make sure I don't have that issue. But guess what? I get into debt. I get credit cards. It's $10,000, $20,000. Stuff that just I shouldn't do. I knew I shouldn't have done. And now it's time for me to turn it around and go into a different direction. Y'all hear that? So what makes you feel like you are the one to take on that burden for everybody else? I feel it. It's in I you. I feel it. It's Every day I feel it. It's like I know I'm supposed to be great. I know I am. Like, I, I just keep coming up short. Business is failing. Like, I know I'm supposed to be great. So it is what it is. So you said you were tired of living a mediocre life. No, I said I'm tired. I'm tired of living a mediocre life. You're tired of that. I'm tired. Sick and tired. I'm so tired. What, what, make, what, what makes you, what's a mediocre life? Why, what are you doing that's mediocre in your life? Uh, working nine to five, but I work third shift. Um, and <laughs> we live so close to our means that like, it's just, I have to be appreciative of every single thing that happens. I think that the difference between when I was younger to now is that I may not have any money to really spend. 
but I have a roof over my head, food in my, my stomach. Like I'm, my, my kids can have clothes. Like I'm so happy as far as that. But as far as what I know, what we deserve as, I don't even know what, what to say in that situation, but what I, I know what we deserve and the fact that we can't have it. We, we, it doesn't even seem realistic to have it. You can have it though. You know what I'm saying? You so, can, you're supposed to have it. Yeah. It all starts right here. So here's, here's one of the things that, that, that keeps me motivated every single day. What if you wake up, or what if you don't wake up tomorrow? What are your two kids gonna do? What is your wife gonna do? Have you thought about that? I do. I do think about it every day. And I say, if I die, my wife has a house, both of our cars, all this debt, she's gonna have to move in with her mom. Like, I think about that stuff all the time. Like, I just need to make sure that when I go, they're set. So you gotta start today. I had to start 10 years ago. <laughs> But you gotta, you gotta leave here this weekend a better person than it was when you came in here. 100%. And that all is gonna start right here. So let me, let me tell you, so how many of you guys flew in here? Raise your hand. Right? So how many of you guys flew in here on the plane? Raise your hand again. Here. Got it. So I did too. But I did what I was supposed to do, so I was sitting first class. <laughs> yeah, let me uh, get a Jack and Coke, please. But before the plane takes off, they play a safety briefing. How many of you guys remember the safety briefing? Please take a moment to find the exits closest to you, keeping in mind that your closest exit may be behind you. If there is a drop in cabin pressure, panels above your seat will open, revealing oxygen masks. If this happens, pull a mask towards you until the tube is fully extended. Place the mask over your nose and mouth, slip the elastic strap over your head, and adjust the mask if necessary. Breathe normally and note that oxygen is flowing, even if the bag doesn't inflate. Be sure to adjust your own mask before helping others. Now hold on a second. So last year, I was flying. I flew over 250,000 miles last year. And me and Dave heard this every single week, over and over and over again. And one time I was sitting and I heard that, and he said, in case there's a decrease in the cabin pressure or something, there'll be a mass that drops from the ceiling. Right? And he says, grab that mask, put it on, and tighten it. Now, there may not be, look like oxygen is flowing, but it is, that's called faith. And then he says, breathe. Even though you don't see oxygen, breathe. And he says, make sure you put on your mask before you help anybody next to you, even if it's your own kid. That is life. I don't think y'all heard me. Put your own mask on first, even if the person beside you is your kid. What they basically saying is, if you're not happy, if you're not trying, if you're not doing everything you can do, if you're not satisfied, how in the hell is somebody next to you gonna be satisfied? How are you gonna satisfy your wife? How are you gonna satisfy your kids? How are you gonna take care of your sister? You know how hard it is to climb a ladder with one hand? So when you leave here this weekend, make sure you give your maximum effort every single day. If you go to nine to five and spend eight hours there, go spend eight more hours on yourself. You can't give them more time for them than you're gonna to give to yourself. <laughs> Mr. Robinson says, this guy's never gonna pay you enough to be his neighbor. And when you get to the top, 
Because of all your hard work and persistence, your imperfect action that Coach Lynch said you got to take, and he says you got to do it now, when you get to the top, then you turn around and you help everybody else that you need to help to come up. So when you guys see Mark in the hallway, my speakers and everybody that has figured out that part of life, give him some words of encouragement because he himself has taken on the burden just like I took on the burden myself. My family depends on me. My 14 employees and their kids depend on me. And every day I wake up excited to serve them because I'm good now. I got my oxygen mask on. Put yours on. So listen, I hope what you've gained from that, one is that if I can do it, you can do it too. It's gonna take some determination, some grit, and some sleepless nights to get to the position where you can stand on this stage. And believe it or not, I ain't even gotten nowhere yet. So are you ready to transform yourself? Are you ready to become the person that you know you're supposed to be. Remember, only a short three years ago, I had nothing. I had nothing. If I can do it, you can do it too. <laughs>